Welcome guys, thanks for joining us in our first trek in our new Urban Overnight series. We've got about three miles to go, we better get started. I'm gonna cut through some neighborhoods here. Hopefully it's gonna be a little quieter. Already had to improvise the lav mic so that I cut down some of the wind. Hopefully you guys will be able to hear me alright. I want to talk for a second about why it's important to do this type of thing, to spend time in your city. Not just driving to work, not just uh, going to the grocery store, but actually spend time in it. One, for recreation. Um, although cities have taken away from nature what it was meant to do, they're still beautiful areas. Um, mankind has built beautiful things and just getting out and seeing it lets you see what you like, what you don't like, uh, you know, what type of future you'd like to have, what you think you could do differently or what you could apply yourself to, to to help the future be different. Another reason is without seeing the day to day goings on of what's happening around your city, you'll have no idea what's going to happen in the event of a crisis. Um, if you don't know where the gangs are hanging out, if you don't know what type of people are in the areas that you're going to traverse through while on route to a bug out location or just to get home and get your family uh, you know during the hive mind during a crisis can get very dangerous very quickly so it's a good idea to know what your city's like and know what's going on in your city before that type of event ever takes place i would say it's just as important if not even a little bit more important than getting out in the woods and knowing how to survive off of the land because first you're gonna to have to get through the city. You're gonna to have to get out into the woods through the city. In many cases, you know, some, some of us, some of our, the people within our community already live outside of city boundaries, but in all likelihood, when a crisis strikes, you're either going to have to move through the city to get out, you're gonna to have to shelter in place you're gonna to have to find a better location within the city, or you're going to have to find some way to get out of your current situation. So getting out there and actually spending time knowing where bodies of water are, knowing where vegetation is, uh, designing routes that give you the most cover from superior air forces, all these types of things are going to help you survive during a crisis. You gotta ask yourself, what are you preparing for? Are, are you prepared to get to a retreat location? Is the retreat location already set up? Are you prepared to shelter in place? Uh, a lot of great friends here on YouTube, like Jay Nola, they're sheltering in place. Their situation will be best handled at home, uh, you know, in a shelter in place type of scenario. One of our friends in the comments and uh, here on YouTube, he lives in Australia. He's seen an influx of proxy gang-related activity, especially in the teenage uh, age groups. Here in my area, we're seeing a similar, a, a similar rising. Uh, the sheriff department is going door to door and leaving pamphlets and letting everyone know that local gangs, usually in an age group of 14 to 21, are working for larger gangs and larger affiliates and they're going and ransacking cars and they're breaking the window open, taking whatever they can get and getting out. What they're doing is they'll have eight people packed into a car, usually an SUV, hit a location, the front of the neighborhood, they'll go car, 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 car and work all the way through the neighborhood. The person driving the SUV will work his way towards the end, 
let everyone know if there's any type of uh, police activity by honking, setting an alarm off. Uh, sometimes they're using GMRS radios. They go car to car to car, get back in the SUV and get out. Uh, when I was talking to one of the local um, members of law enforcement about it, he said that they're acquiring firearms like you wouldn't believe because a person will leave it in their car. Uh, you know, they'll put it in the glove box, they'll think it's safe there, they've got the alarm on. But the fact is that once you get to the car, once the alarm goes off, it's too late because these guys are so fast. So it's good to see that these types of uh, people are being aware of their surroundings and their environment and their neighborhoods because that's what you and I need during a crisis. We need people to be aware and we need someone to look and say something's not right here. It's around 6.45 now, the humidity is really starting to kick in. Um, probably got about another mile left to my destination and uh, then I'll start setting up. Let me get a little bit better of a view of my surroundings here. Here's my destination. That's gonna be home for the night. Hopefully nobody's already there. Here's home for the night. Let's see what it looks like inside. Pretty good spot. Nobody's here. There's no signs of any gang activity or nobody causing any problems. One spot I went to earlier had just, it was just nasty. And it looked like there were other people, maybe some homeless people staying there. I didn't want any part of it. But this spot looks good. It's got good cover. Even if it rains, even if it downpours, I'll be able to get to the middle of the bridge, have cover all night, so I'm not worried about that. It's a nice breeze. Mosquitoes will probably be bad though. Let's get set up. There's a couple of things you want to look out for when doing any type of urban camping or, or scenario training in an urban environment. You want to look out for any signs of recent activity. Uh, are there spray paint marks on the walls nearby? Um, fresh food wrappers, uh, beer cans, a big thing. If you see fresh beer cans, and you can tell that they're fresh because there's no sign of rust. Uh, you know, they don't have a worn, weathered look where the paint has been chipped or, or uh, you know, damaged by ultra ultraviolet light. If you see anything like that, you don't want to stay there. People who go to drink under the bridges are usually not the best type of people. Um, 
if you don't see any of these signs and it looks like a relatively nice location and you're by yourself, you're going to want to do your best to make sure that you're truly by yourself. Uh, a lot of times the homeless will come to a location to sleep at night. They don't want to stay there all day because the police will harass them and razz them for being there. So they'll go and spend the day somewhere uh, and then go to the location at night. So if you, once you make sure that you're truly by yourself or if you're with someone and you're able to set up some sort of watch system um, you know, where you sleep in shifts, you're fine. It's a great chance to get out there, uh, especially when you don't live near uh, the woods. If you don't live just a half hour away from the woods, go camping in your city. Um, now, of course, obey all laws, jurisdictions, things like that. Um, but taking a documentary, for instance, um, if you were to spend the night uh, shooting a documentary, you'd have no problem. If you were to spend the night somewhere fishing uh, on a lake or, uh, or a waterway, you have no problem. Unless, you know, the, to my knowledge, there's no known curfews in fact for people over the age of 18, so you wouldn't have any problem. Um, just get out there and start doing it. As, uh, as a good friend Kenneth Cram says, try it. You'll like it. Well, the sun's going down quick. Actually, it's turning out to be a really beautiful sunset. And that's one of those things that you're gonna see. Just getting out into your city and learning the environment, you know, the location that I'm at here, I would have never believed the depth of field that I see with the sunset just because of the contrast with the bridge here and uh, the sun setting over the ocean. All right, guys, well, night came up on me really quick. I'm, uh, I'm getting a little tired, so I'm going to brew myself a, another cup of coffee and uh, maybe take another walk, capture some other footage. First, let me show you what, what I'll be sleeping with here. All right, I've got my GI bivy bag here that my wife sewed a Velcro stripping around. Um, and she also sewed a matching stripping around a mosquito net, so that'll lay in the bivy bag um, it allows me to keep it all the way open to get kind of maximum air ventilation or to close it up and just have my head exposed uh, on top of that i've got a thermarest pad and uh, then i'll be sleeping on my poncho as a pillow tonight and um, and then just the rest of my pack gear so see you guys in a couple minutes I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but it's starting to rain a little bit. I'm beat after that time lapse. I think I'm going to call it a night. See you in the morning.
that was an interesting night's sleep. The uh, rain started coming in at around three or four o'clock. Um, I was sleeping on the edge, like I showed you guys, uh, uh, on the edge of the bridge's overpass, um, so that I could maximize airflow and keep the mosquitoes down a little bit. Unfortunately, sleeping on the edge allowed the wind to push the rain in, so uh, somewhere between three and four, I started getting raindrops on the edge of my bivy sack. Luckily, it's waterproof, so I didn't have to worry about it, you know, soaking me for the night, but um, I'm thankful that I packed ultralight. That way I was able to just move quickly. I picked up my bivy sack. I didn't have a tent that I had to pick up and move or reset up. Um, picked up my bag, uh, my pad, and moved just up 20 feet towards the inner part of the, the bridge's overhang. Um, as far as takeaways on the first urban overnight that we videotaped, um, I would say situational awareness is a, is a must. You have to be able to be aware of your surroundings. Um, if you're a real heavy sleeper, I would suggest camping with somebody or doing an overnight with somebody. That way uh, you guys can kind of take shifts or turns as far as who's awake and who's sleeping. Um, I'm a real light sleeper. Everything that's out of the norm wakes me up right away. Uh, I, I also set up a couple of other things that, that will help um, alert me when anyone comes anywhere near me. Um, I would definitely suggest you get out and try uh, in your area. Um, you know, go fishing overnight. Go uh, just go on a walk. You know, go on a hike. Um, Take your backpack, see how far you can get throughout the night, camp somewhere, uh, you know, get up and, and of course, you know, continue on, make notes, continually adjust your ca your camp, continually adjust your backpack, see what you need. Um, the biggest thing I would say is don't carry too much. Uh, if you carry 15, 20 pounds, it's just going to bog you down. You're not going to want to get to your destination. Once you get there, you're going to be too tired. You're not going to want to set up. Uh, you'll be exhausted, you'll kind of lose your awareness of the surroundings around you. Um, Camp Light, uh, there's a couple of great channels out there. Kenneth Cram, I, you know, he's going for an ultralight backpack right now. He has an amazing time out there in the woods and it's a joy for us to watch him, I'm sure. If you guys haven't seen him, you've got to go check him out. Um, just get out there, that's the most important thing. Uh, there was a lot more traffic than I would expect in the early morning. Um, you know, of course, it's a major bridge, so there were a lot of sirens throughout the night. There, no one bothered me. No one came over and, and had any problems. Um, a couple of people were fishing not too far away. Uh, just everyone was having a, a decent night, um, enjoying what can be enjoyed in the hot Florida summer. Um, if a crisis were to strike, of course, a bridge wouldn't likely be one of your um, major points of stay because of its openness. Now granted, you can get up against somewhere and, and kind of cover your back and cover your sides and see what's coming at you, but you aren't able to uh, hide. You're always going to remain open. Um, but it is good to get to a bridge and kind of know where you can take shelter. This would make a great impromptu shelter. Um, as far as long-term stay, you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to stay here. You'd want to continue on to your location. But knowing these points of access on your way from your home to your retreat or to a friend's house or from work to home, make it so that if a disaster strikes while you're not in the best location possible, you kind of know the routine and you know where to go. And if you have your go bag in your trunk, you have no problem. You've done this a hundred times before. Um, that I guess is the biggest takeaway, is just to get out there and practice in the city. Uh, most likely a, a major crisis event isn't gonna strike while you're already at your retreat. If it does, beautiful, that, that's the best case scenario. Um, more likely than not, a crisis will strike while you're at work, or while you're sleeping, or while you're having dinner. It'll be just the normal day-to-day -day functions that make you react right away, without a moment's notice. and. Uh, Having already done this before and having planned for it, been out in your city, uh, walked your route to wherever your destination is, know where you can get into, um, knowing 
that if one location that you plan to stay an overnight at is already taken, is already used, you just have to make it to the next one. Knowing all of these things will better your chances of survival in a true crisis event. So get out there, practice. Um, I'm going to try to capture some more footage here before I get home. I likely won't be able to bust the camera out too much just because it's still raining out there and I don't want to, uh, I don't want to ruin the camera. So I hope you guys enjoyed our first urban overnight as much as I did. Uh, next one, I'm planning to do a rooftop overnight. Um, hopefully get some good nighttime time lapse, some good, uh, you know, sun up, sun down, and uh, maybe talk about the pack some more if that's something you guys want to see. So make sure to leave any comments or questions down in the comments section. Other than that, stay safe.